Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group and I'm here to bring you the weekly economic review for the week ending January 29, 2021. So already one month in the books. So uh, as usual today, uh, we also have our chief economist uh, Clément Gignac. So uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Gignac. Good morning. So uh, we'll uh, change things up a little bit this week. I will be uh, reviewing the market action, but then Mr. Gignac will be discussing the economy and I'll be back with the financial markets. And this week, it was an interesting week because we have something that I've never witnessed in the past. I think it's kind of new. You have David versus Goliath, the, uh, the retail investors trying to take on the hedge funds. So I'll try to make this uh, clear for you in a few minutes. But uh, the result is that we have had a volatile week uh, as you can see pretty much all red on the screen bonds were down the tmx long index 0.20 percent negative already minus 3.15 percent year to date uh, equities were negative uh, the markets that had the best uh, record recently the emerging markets uh, uh, were down a bit more this week minus 2.3 percent but uh, nowhere to hide on the week uh, price of oil positive when you have a risk off tone you have usually a rally on the US dollar versus other currencies. So you were down on the Canadian dollar, down on the euro, and, and gold was also a bit negative uh, on the week. So uh, as I mentioned, I'll discuss the, the, the Robin Hood situation in a few minutes. But now I hand it over uh, to you, uh, Mr. Zniak, with the economy. Yeah, thank you. A lot of things going on. And we have a uh, breaking news with Johnson's vaccine. We have a uh, post-mortem of uh, uh, U.S. economy last year, but uh, just start with our traditional uh, uh, chart uh, on the, the pandemic. So uh, just a reminder, this is the daily new cases expressed uh, per million population. This is a seven day moving average. So uh, you can notice that uh, we see a, a deceleration. Uh, keep in mind that uh, we have seen more restriction, restriction, excuse me, by some uh, some place, including in Canada, even in Quebec. We talk about curfew, but uh, we have a significant decline in new cases. It's not expressed uh, on the chart, but uh, nonetheless, we see that. and we see a, a little uh, tug of war. Huh? We have new cases, but uh, the, we have now the, the vaccination going on as well. On the next slide, we present that in fact. It's uh, it's uh, it started the, the vaccination. Uh, notice on the left side we have a, a chart. And sorry to to be in Fr the, to be in French, but uh, this is the number of doses uh, per 100 person. So basically, the percentage is now Israel who have uh, reached half of population already got a vac vaccine so very encouraging out there we have a uk as well 11 person us uh, we talk about seven person we see acceleration uh, unfortunately canada is only 2.4 percent keep in mind canada does not produce any vaccine again the covid 19 and uh, we are uh, in fact uh, rely on, on Pfizer production overseas and you have uh, some uh, difficulty these days so we'll see but we have a good news we have uh, this uh, breaking news on a Friday morning on Johnson and Johnson mentioned uh, the COVID-19 vaccine uh, is uh, came out uh, it's effective at 66 percent in US 72 percent keep in mind that look like a low compared to Pfizer and Moderna but uh, it's not the new technology is different it's much easier to uh, to deal with and manage because uh, no necessity to be minus 60 uh, so it's between two and eight degrees celsius it's uh, much easier could be in the in the fridge if you want regular fridge and uh, it's only one dose uh, compared to two, two 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 doses so it's interesting so it's uh, so don't be fooled by the the ratio is lower uh, because, it, 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 in fact, uh, the, it's more easier to, to distribute. They could produce uh, 1 billion doses this year. So, uh, something to watch. Unfortunately, in the U.S., uh, yes, it, it's true that the efficiency looked like uh, our 72%, but uh, it's because the new variant was not in, in the sample. But nonetheless, uh, much less hospitalization that you will see. And this is what important, possibly for the older people. So it's very encouraging the, the, this figure, uh, the, this news uh, this morning. Shifting to economy, in fact, uh, we have uh, uh, the result for 2020 on the U.S. economy. So overall for 2020, uh, the, the U.S. economy has contracted by 35 five uh, percent this is the biggest as you can notice on the left side this is uh, annual data back 
to to the the, the thirties, if you want. Uh, so this is the biggest uh, contraction of the U.S. economy since the the Second War. Uh, uh, on the Q4. At annual rate, we have a rebound. Uh, it's four percent rebound. So that uh, a little bit more than what we we thought a few months ago. So that explains that the, why the contraction is only three point five percent. It's our in Canada. Uh, we can talk about that when the figure will be released because we have only November so far. But uh, to conclude, on US on the right side, you have a two curve. Oh, sorry, if you <laughs> we can be back on the right, uh, you have two curve. You have the employment. And you have the GDP. Uh, notice uh, the, the 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 red curve represents employment. Unfortunately, we are still seven percent lower than the uh, pre-COVID-19 level of February. Uh, as far as GDP is concerned, uh, it, it's minus two percent. So we are not completely out of the wood yet, but it's encouraging. We uh, we are in the right direction. And with what I mentioned before, vaccination going on, Johnson and Johnson. Uh, we think that the recovery will. will continue maybe at uh, the, the the pace of the recovery what will, will depend uh, country by country on next slide uh, uh, in fact that this uh, in US uh, we have talked about uh, that topic uh, in the last uh, few few weeks and few months that this pandemic increased the inequality and to this illustrate that the fact uh, the perception as well is not only a perception, is a reality. And that is the survey, uh, because if you go with the consumer uh, conference, board consumer confidence survey for our soul, uh, who earn uh, more than 125000 a year, uh, they see things uh, more uh, optimistic uh, for many reasons. The stock market going up, they are probably owner rather than renter. The own price has increased. They have a wealth effect. So they see things improve. It's not as it was a year ago, two years ago. But nonetheless, we are on the right direction. But notice on the right side, people who have much less money, uh, they do not perceive and interpret the situation in the same situation. So they see their personal situation still affected. They are probably renter than owner. And in addition, they have probably no money at all on the stock market. So you can notice uh, that, uh, in fact, the perception of the U.S. economy is not, and the pandemic is not the same, depending uh, which, uh, how much you earn uh, a year and what is your job and your situation. On the next slide, uh, to conclude the economy, in fact, uh, uh, this is interesting chart from IMF. It was a forecast revised this 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 week, and they have published a, a, a chart to illustrate that uh, some countries uh, will uh, they expect that their GDP will already exceed the pre-COVID-19 this year. It's the case for China. Uh, that is a 10% uh, uh, GDP hour by the end of this year compared to uh, pre-COVID-19. Notice U.S. economy will probably hire as well, but unfortunately other countries, mostly Europe countries, uh, Mexico as well, uh, but even Canada, uh, it's not this year that we will recover all the output gap. Uh, we still have output gap this year and will not recover all the GDP losses. So I've been long a little bit, but I think this week uh, we have a lot of action on the stock market uh, and uh, I'm just curious to to, to listen, uh, Sebastian, and maybe uh, a recap a little bit uh, and where we're we going with what's going on uh, with Robinhood, Reddit, and the Secret Exchange Commission. So back to you. Sure, thank you, thank you. And it was a very interesting week, uh, something that I, I'd never seen before. I don't think the market has ever seen before ever. So as you see the headlines on the left, individual investors route a hedge funds. So it was the, the fight between David and Goliath. So just to, to, to make it very uh, simple, to, 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 to everyone. So the hedge funds, of course, they have uh, many types of strategies, but one of their strategies is to uh, have what they call long and short funds. So long and short, what it means, long is when you buy a position in a company and short, that, that means when you short a company, so that means you borrow a share from someone else, you sell it and you have exactly the opposite exposure as we typically think as investors. So when the stock price goes up, you lose money and when it goes down, you make money. So what they do these hedge funds is like they look at some companies where they think they have a, a, a bad balance sheet or they have bad prospects so they short these so they uh, they sell short these stocks and they take that money that they make and 
they buy companies that they think have better prospects so they want to make they benefit from the best companies going up and from the bad companies going down so uh, you have some some so, some um, to through social media now you had uh, people gathering on reddit and just looking building a kind of a strategy of looking at the most shorted stocks and say well we can massively buy these names and GameStop that you see on the right is one of these names you can massively buy this push the price up and all of the edge funds they'll have to quickly rebuy those uh, those in those names too to cover their positions and that'll push the stock price even higher and as you can see it kind of worked for a few names there was GameStop there was Blackberry that was part of that there was AMC that was part of that so this is it what's going on and when you have hedge funds that have to quickly rush for cover in some names that they had shorted well to finance the rebuying of those stocks they need to sell some of their long positions so that's why it's, it's causing lots and lots of volatility because some names are being sold that were held by hedge funds uh, because they need to finance that the fact that they need to rebuy the shares of these so as you can see lots of complicated lots of volatility um, in the market and now the SEC is reviewing some recent trading to protect to protect the retail investors uh, politicians are getting in because they say well uh, individual investors should be able to play the game that the big investors play so it's not fair and you have all of that so how will it end probably it won't end well for either small investors or hedge funds or both but this is a, a one way that uh, volatility could creep into the markets remember that in the few in the last few weeks we mentioned that there were many stories of exuberance in the the markets uh, left and right uh, and that uh, we were starting to be more careful in our in our strategy you never know what causes volatility to appear but uh, here this story this week it uh, it generated the, the record volume on the nice sea so more volume this week than during the covid week uh, during the lehman fall uh, during the flash crash of 2010 so lots and lots and lots of volume creating some volatility and when i showed the returns uh, on the week uh, at, the, at the start of this uh, uh, of this presentation as you can see it was not minus five minus ten percent it was still still subdued but there's a potential for volatility to creep in when you have uh, had such a strong rally in the markets and this, this is uh, the rally here the importance of perspective so we always need to look at history the current bull market is on top and you have all of the other bull markets since 1940 and uh, the red line is the average the blue line is the current situation on top and as you can see we are way ahead the average a bull market now and it would not be a surprise after such a strong gain and after so, 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 such a, a risk tolerance in the market or such risk seeking behavior recently to have some kind of volatility or to have a bit of a correction into the market that would not be a surprise so important is proof of, pers of perspective uh, lots of returns recently and no one ever got poor by taking some profits but when i say taking some profits that doesn't mean to sell everything and go to cash uh, if you are a financial advisor i'm sure that you've seen this chart many many times and if you are a retail investor Investor, probably your financial advisor show you a version of this chart but here this is since 1995 if you were invested fully in the S&P 500 an 8.4 percent annualized return is what you've made over 25 years uh, if you missed only a few of the best days a year then your performance goes down so timing the market can be costly what we do in our strategies that we take some profit uh, from from equities but we remain well invested in equities uh, we have some bonds to stabilize the portfolio we do raise some cash but we're not selling everything it's just always it's risk management is the name of the game so we encourage you to view this as a potential buying opportunity or just remain calm uh, thinking that remember that uh, you have some volatility so volatility in the market it's nothing that is uh, that is uh, that is surprising and that uh, there will be a buying opportunity on the other side of that and the strategy so despite the volatility maybe bringing a chart that we've presented a few times uh, this year for those of you who follow us uh, the TSX has underperformed big time the S&P 500 in the past decade the decade that we're looking at ahead should be marked by stronger and broader global growth just like the 2000s so we could have an outperformance of the TSX so we like the TSX and if it goes down like it is going now 
well we like it even more and va value versus growth the 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 blue line on the bottom uh, value has underperformed growth big time and we think that uh, there's some potential there some value there and we like it even more when stocks uh, go down so uh, we, we we don't run out of ideas there's always some good pockets of value and uh, for anyone who can be opportunistic uh, so what to watch next week uh, on uh, economic data uh, unemployment rate uh, last month was at 8.6 percent and we lost 62,000 jobs uh, last month so Let's see if in January we have a rebound uh, in the U.S. Uh, we'll have uh, it's expected that we have a gain of 50,000 jobs in January, but the unemployment rate should be at 6.7 percent. Uh, we'll have the ISM manufacturing and services index. Both should remain well in, in, in uh, expansion territory at 1656.8, but should be fading a little bit because of the measures that we've put in place for COVID again uh, in, in the U.S. So so that wraps it up for the week. Uh, as usual, ia.ca uh, slash economy is your go-to web page for anything economy and market related. Uh, this uh, review will be uh, will be there with subtitles now. So accessibility, uh, we, we, done, uh, we, we, we did a few enhancements, but the PDFs are not available anymore on the web page. If you want them, uh, you can write at economics at ia.ca. It's economics, uh, ICS at IA. And we'll be send, sending you the PDF uh, if you ask it. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Gignac, for your insights as usual. Welcome and congratulations for your very articulated and crystal clear explanation. So maybe we will alternate more often down the road. <laughs> Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. We, we always we need to learn from the best. So thank you. And um, I'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next week with another edition of the weekly economic review.